SAS RAID controller card. Uh, this, is, this particular brand is the LSI. It's very similar to the Adaptech version. They run about $200, 200, $200 and uh, about two and a quarter for four channels and we'll get into the different channels. Uh, <clears throat> if, you, if you go from four, four devices to eight devices it almost doubles the price of the card. So these are not cheap, inexpensive cards. You want to handle them with a great deal of care. Uh, we're going to walk you through the steps that you have to take in order to use these server-based controllers. We're going to take server-based controllers and put them in basically desktops. So there are some issues when we do that. Uh, server controllers basically depend on the server airflow to cool the, the chips that are on the on the particular card, on this particular controller. Well, the desktop does not have that kind of airflow, so we're going to have to make our own airflow. This chip uh, will get extremely hot. It will jump. If you don't have some kind of air cooling across the, the heat sink here, your temperature can jump up to 100 degrees, 120 degrees Fahrenheit, which is exceeding the limits of the temperature uh, specs on this card. So we're going to do some finagling in order to make the card work in a desktop. Remember, most servers have very strong 200 uh, feet per minute airflow is a typical server. When you get to the desktop over here, we really don't have that kind of airflow through the desktop area. So when I put in a card here, I just do not have that kind of airflow. In a server that would be pretty much uh, the standard. In a desktop I basically flow air through the a little bit of airflow through the uh, interior from the fan inside and that's just about it so it does not meet that 200 feet per minute uh, requirement of that card. <clears throat> so we're going to have to do some special things. So one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to use this fan assembly, this Thermotech um, turbo fan. It's going to pull air from the outside and it's going to blow air across the, the cooling coils and you'll actually see me do it. So here we're going to do, I'm going to take it, hook it up to the power supply and I'm going to insert it right next to where the controller is and you can see that once I bring these down <clears throat> and lock these in place this fan is now right up against, and let me zoom in so you can see it so the fan is going to push air right up against the controller heat sink thereby cooling that controller down and we're going to monitor that with a thermal uh, gun here. This gun will point a laser and allow us to monitor the temperature of the, the assembly there. So we're going to monitor that and make sure that it stays around 90 degrees Fahrenheit uh, no more nor less. Now you can see that we've got right now uh, connected to the card two SATA drives. We're going to change this when we actually get this into production. We'll actually use laptop two and a half inch drives and that way you don't pull as much power from the power supply and exceed, possibly exceed the power supply, prob uh, power supply capacity limitations. In this case we're going to do it just with two SATA hard drives we could very easily do this with four. This is a four channel controller. You can see that I have two additional SATA connectors. What's really nice about <clears throat> this particular brand, this particular brand of, of SAS SATA controller is it will support both SATA drives as well as SAS drives. Remember SAS is serial attached SCSI. So if you want better performance, you would move to the SAS drives. If you want uh, high quality RAID, but you're looking for that cheaper price, you can go to SATA hard drives and lower your cost on your overall RAID system. So those are your choices. This card supports both SATA drives and SAS drives. Most SAS drives are two and a half inch. Right now, <clears throat> we're using two three and a half inch SATA drives which are pretty well exceeding, we're, we're getting close to the power supply limitation of this particular desktop. Let me back up.
and it kind of looks like this. You want to be very, very careful about your hard drives, where you put them. You want to make sure that you do not expose the bottom of the hard drive to metal. So we're going to fix this. This was not a good setup. We never put hard drives setting on anything except something that would protect them. So in most cases we want to make sure that all your drives have a rubber enclosure or we set those hard drives on some kind of insulator. Never set hard drives with their circuit board sitting down on metal. That's a disaster, okay? So we don't want to do that. So we want to make sure we protect our hard drives at all times. Make sure the power supply connectors for the SATA is connected as well as the SATA data connector. Once that's all set up, <clears throat> we can now begin to power this up. Make sure that the fan is running. You've got good airflow across the heat sink here. And you should be good to run this this controller here. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and fire this on. You can see that the the cooling device, let's go ahead and power this on. You can see the cooling device uh, begins to spin and it blows. You can feel the air blowing on the heat sink. That's going to be very important and we're going to monitor that. Also up here you're going to see the screen. We're going to hit the uh, any key and we're going to watch the there's the LSI, you can, we'll zoom in on that, there's the LSI information from the RAID controller coming up and it's going to initiate, look at, look at the devices on and then we're going to do a control H to get into the, the actual firmware. So it's found, uh, foreign configurations found on adapter, uh, so notice it's, it's, it's actually found them and we're going to do a control H and that's actually going to go, go actually into the firmware of that controller. It's very ugly, it's not pretty, uh, but it's typical firmware for a RAID controller. So you'll get in there and you'll do simple uh, mirroring, you'll do a, a couple different kinds of RAID configurations. When we get the laptop hard drives, you'll probably do a couple RAID 5s. But once you're familiar with the PERC, which is on the Dell, and you've done a couple uh, RAID configurations with software, you'll find this one no more difficult than the others. A couple things you'll have to remember is when you're done with the lab, be sure to clear out the RAID controller so it's all the configuration information is wiped out. That way the next poor student is not struggling with uh, an existing firmware information or existing configuration information on the controller. So make sure you flush the controller, dis disembark every, or uh, disassemble everything, and that way the next student won't have to worry about messing with uh, your, your mess and cleaning it up. The thing that you want to watch is the heat. So we're going to take the our temperature gun and we're just going to shoot on that chip. You can see we're running about 92 degrees. We want it to stay right around 92, 91, 90 some degrees. That's about okay. When it starts creeping up above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, we're getting we're getting a little bit hot. If that fan was removed, this chip would run up to about 120 degrees Fahrenheit, which really exceeds the cards manufacturer. So since we don't have good airflow normally in this this type of design, this desktop design, we have to create that airflow with this fan. So you want to make sure you feel that air. And once you do, the chip stays pretty cool. Everything stays where it's supposed to be. And you shouldn't have any problems with the controller whatsoever. Now you can get up here in the controller software and really go to work and have fun. Again, we hope to, hope to have some two and a half inch hard drives uh, so that you can hook them up and they'll draw a whole lot less power. They'll be very easy to configure and um, you can raid them and play with them and get a chance to see a SAS controller. Today, all servers are using SAS controllers. For example, if you decide to put build a video editor at home, this is the kind of controller that you're going to want to use. This is a high performance uh, contr ray controller and if you're doing things like video or audio editing, 
Uh, you can use this in a desktop, but you will have to add additional cooling. And you can put in a variety of hard drives and really make a high performance RAID system that really will screen. So that's a good introduction. Uh, just be very careful. You will have to... There is an existing video card in that PCI Express 16 slot. You'll have to take this out. This is the uh, existing video card. Sorry about that. That is the video card that's in there when you get your DC7700. You'll have to carefully remove this video card and you're going to put your controller card in its place. Yes, you're going to use where the video card is. Now this particular uh, controller uses times 8, only uses 8 of the 16 lanes. But you'll notice that the video card that we have in there is very cheap. It only uses 8 lanes of the 16. It may only use 4. So this is a very inexpensive PCI Express uh, card and we're going to take it out temporarily, put in the SAS controller, and then when we're all done we'll put this video card back in its location. One last item that I'm going to show you is how to connect the, the uh, SATA, the SAS cable system, to the controller. So you notice that the SAS controller, uh, there's a series of different kinds of plugs uh, that you can, that you want to be very careful when you order the card, the SAS controller, that you know the kind of connector that's on it. So when you buy your cabling system, like this one, uh, you buy the right plug, the right type of plug to fit the right connector. This is going to work something like this, and you're simply going to slide it in and lock in place. Let's bring it down and push it until it locks in place. So you want to make sure that it's fully locked in place, and then you're ready to insert it and connect up your SATA SATA riser. This is the DC7700 that you'll be using. It will be the mid tower. So when you're ready to do this, get with your instructor. Make sure that you carefully remove and install all your components carefully. If you don't, you can damage motherboards. We do not want to damage these computers as they are very good computers and they are high-end lab machines. So our expectation is you're really careful very cautious about what you do. Remember, the micro miniaturization of all these components make them very fragile. Do not get in a hurry. Take your time. Ask your instructor for help if you need it.